The sun is rising up from behind me. And that is such a welcoming sight because the three hours that was Monday Night Raw last night, that made this whole world gray, gloomy, depressing, and tragic. I'm sure for all of us. But I knew if we just tried to get some sleep, the sun would come up, we'd get a new day, and we'd have a new lease on life. Now I know many of you probably think I'm going to start this review off by saying I told you so. By saying I was right all along. By saying, even when you think I'm wrong, wait for it. Because I'm going to end up being right in the end. No, you see, I don't need to say all of that to you guys because most of you have already said it for me. You see, I don't like being right all the time because that usually means what we feared most is actually transpiring. What we didn't want to see is coming to fruition. What we didn't want to have happen is happening. When Becky Lynch got taken out of that Survivor Series match and everybody had had the simplistic formula. She drops the title at TLC when she returns, she wins the Rumble, and she goes on the main event WrestleMania. BC, there's no hole in that plan. This is exciting. It's going to be better than ever, BC. And what have I said for months, and I took a lot of heat for this. I said for months there's no way WWE is going to captivate us for six months to get us to WrestleMania. So you better hope she doesn't drop the title at TLC. You better hope they just continue to build the Becky Lynch that we have right now. The badass Becky Lynch. The man. You better hope she ain't dropping no title. She drops the title. Everyone goes, don't worry, BC. Even though she didn't look that strong in the match, she's going to come back at the Rumble, BC, and she's going to win it in, in awesome, dramatic, badass fashion. I said, don't hold your breath. No, she's not. WWE can't book that way, especially for somebody like Becky Lynch. No, don't worry, BC. It'll be fine. Yeah? They threw her in a championship match at the Rumble, had her tap out in six seconds. She pleads her way as the final participant in the Rumble, spends four minutes in there, and somehow in four minutes, thanks to Nia Jax, supposedly, she gets a leg injury and barely throws Charlotte Flair over the top rope. So as the last participant, she gets injured and barely beats Charlotte. Hours after tapping out to Asuka. Yeah, a real badass Royal Rumble victory. A badass Royal Rumble for Becky Lynch as a whole. Okay, BC, you were right. TLC wasn't really badass for Becky. Royal Rumble didn't come off his plan either. But but, but don't worry, she's got the main event at Mania now, BC. This is going to excite and captivate us. And I said again... Don't be so sure. The booking is not going to captivate us. They don't know how to book Becky. They're going to try to put their thumbs on her character. They're going to stymie her. They're going to totally befuddle the booking that was easily put in their lap. Just let Becky be the badass Becky she was being. No. We'll give Becky's character to Charlotte. We'll give a little bit to Rollins. We'll give a little bit to AJ Styles. Everybody gets a new ruthless, vicious side of them. But that was Becky's character. No, don't worry. We're going to go a different way with Becky. We're going to make her the underdog. We're going to give her a leg injury, and she's going to sell that all the way up to WrestleMania. That'll be the storyline. And at WrestleMania, we don't know if she's going to be able to overcome Ronda. Yes, because Becky Lynch on one leg can beat Ronda Rousey realistically when Becky Lynch with two legs couldn't even beat Asuka. But I guess I just think in realistic terms. I guess I have to suspend my disbelief in a whole nother planet. You told me time and time again not to worry, BC. It's all going to work out for the best. And I said from the beginning, no, it will not. Because the main event will most likely be involving Becky and Ronda. And here was my biggest fear for all of us. Who Anybody who's not a, a fucking bandwagon Becky Lynch fan anyway. You're probably excited for anything. She could be shopping in a supermarket and you're going to love that booking. Wow! Becky picked up the Cheerios! The Cheerios are in the basket! 
Orange juice, no pulp. This is amazing booking. Where's Becky gonna go next? Aisle five, the Kleenex. And you'll love it. You'll golf clap it, you'll fucking hoot and hock, and you'll fucking go ballistic. That's great. Hoot, holler, and go ballistic. That's great. But for us pro wrestling fans that want to see a kick-ass main event at WrestleMania, what are we getting? What the fuck are we getting here? Becky Lynch tapped out in six seconds to Asuka, wobbles her way out of a rumble victory, weasels in there and wobbles out, and ever since she's been hobbing along like a fucking hobbit, and she's being punked down to still. The same thing I said her booking sucked when Charlotte Flair would say, Becky, shut up, and Becky Lynch would put her head down. Like she was an abused victim of some sort. Ronda Rousey last night backstage punks Becky Lynch out again. In her face, hooting and hollering this promo, a bunch of words put together by Ronda Rousey. And Becky Lynch just eats that shit and walks off. She got suspended. I'm gonna leave. You're lucky I have one leg. How is... This is exciting, a pro wrestling fan that is not on the Becky Lynch bandwagon? If you're not a Becky Lynch fan, how the hell is that your main event? Ronda Rousey is even being booked correctly. Ronda Rousey is out there trailing her arms with no hope in sight for landfall. She's in the middle of the ocean, frailing away, and there's no landfall to be found. She is sinking, and WWE is not even throwing her a lifeline, a raft. They keep giving her longer promos by the week. Ronda Rousey should not be cutting long promos, because she's not good at it. So what do you have Ronda Rousey do? Let's have her go even longer. She's not great at that. It co it's coming off so odd to me and awkward. The delivery is like she's just trying to spit it out before she forgets something. And I don't blame her. You gave her three pages of dialogue. And then you have her go out there against all of the riot, two thirds of the riot squad like we give a fuck. Of course she can take out the Riot Squad. She can take out the whole roster. And then you have her... You, you told her before you sent her out, you said the crowd's probably going to boo you again like last week. So before you tell Sarah you want to take her on, after you beat Liv Morgan and you take on Sarah Logan, make sure you take the mic... And tell the crowd, you want to boo me? Who wants to boo me? You want to boo me, but nobody can do anything about it. Sarah, you want in? Get in here. I'll take care of you too. That was supposed to be her promo to the crowd. The problem was, the crowd wasn't even booed her that much. If even. So they didn't give her an audible before she went out there last night. They just told Ronda Rousey, grab the mic, they're going to be booing you. Tell them, yeah, you want to boo me? Who wants to boo me? Who wants to doubt me? The problem was nobody was really booing her. So she takes the mic. Nobody's booing her. Now she's really flustered. But she keeps with it because that's what she was told. And she starts stuttering her words. You want to boo? Who wants to boo? Who, who wants to be mean to me? Why? Who is the... Sarah? <laughs> what the fuck? This whole Ronda Rousey beating up the Riot Squad came minutes after Becky Lynch was suspended by Stephanie McMahon because Stephanie McMahon said, Becky, you either go see the medical team or you are suspended because I think your leg injury is more severe than it is. And, and, and there's Becky Lynch playing this little abused victim. Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on to WrestleMania and Ronnie, I'm gonna take it out because I, I'm gonna take it out because Ronnie, I went from negative to positive. I went from negative to something really special and you're not gonna take it from me, Rhonda. From nothing to something. Ronnie, I'm gonna get you at WrestleMania. I'm okay. Stephanie, you ain't taking it from me, Stephanie. 
I know I was a glitch in your plan, and your plan was not for Becky the Man Lynch. But Becky the Man Lynch is here now, and I'm the glitch that I'm gonna keep on glitching. Do you hear me? So fucking annoying. This, what are you talking about? You're a glitch in the plan. And the authority is now going to be a guy. Of course this is where they're. We don't need you to say that. We know that. Now your actions have to speak louder than words now. If Becky Lynch is going to be on the mic. She needs to be throwing zingers. Because that's what she does best on social media. And that's some of her best promos. Otherwise you're getting down and out abused victim Becky. This weak looking meek character that you just want to brush aside and get a mean streak in her. The mean streak that we loved at the end of 2018, but now it is nowhere to be found. There is Becky Lynch about to cry in front of Stephanie McMahon. I don't want to see the doctor. I'm not going to see a doctor. I just want to take on Ronnie. It's my moment. You can't take my moment from me, Stephanie. You can't. You can't take the moment. What are you talking about? Shake it off, as Charlotte Flair said. This stupid storyline injury is dumb. Some people actually think it's real. It's not. Watch the Royal Rumble. It started when Nia threw her off. And if you look closely and carefully, Becky Lynch grabbed the wrong leg afterwards. First it was the left leg, then it was the right leg, or vice versa, whatever the hell. Becky Lynch doesn't even know which leg it is. And then there's people trying to draw their own conclusions. Maybe Becky has minor injuries they're trying to... No! She is fine! And even if she wasn't, you don't sell that shit. You make it look like she's fine. When Stone Cold was injured, they never even mentioned that shit. He just went out there every week and caused damage and raised hell because his booking was flawless. Becky Lynch's booking is tragic. BC, she gets a reaction. Who the fuck cares? Roman Reigns got a reaction. That doesn't mean he was booked properly. At least Becky Lynch's reaction is more positive. That's great. But anybody can get over. It's staying over. Ask Zack Ryder about his several months of being over and how he's now in obscurity. Ask Rusev about his months being over with the crowd and how he's now in obscurity. Why? The fans didn't want to bail on them. But they had no choice. The booking was so pathetic, we lost any interest we had in them. There was a time where Dolph Ziggler looked on the rise and was going over with the crowd. His booking was tragic. And now we look at Dolph like a bunch of bullshit. Nobody wants to see Dolph on your TV now. But there was a time Dolph was on the rise. We wanted to see him. He was cashing in. We were loving it. People can get over. That's great to see. You can throw the she deserves it all you want. But that's like saying Sasha doesn't deserve it. Charlotte doesn't deserve a main event. I don't care how many opportunities she's, she's had. She doesn't deserve a main event. Sasha doesn't deserve a main event. Asuka doesn't deserve a main event. Becky Lynch got on the main roster in 2015. That's not that long. She's already had a couple championship runs. Royal Rumble victory. She's been at WrestleMania. She is the one that deserves WrestleMania's main event. Okay. Because she gets a reaction. I don't give a fuck about the reaction if the booking is tragic. What the fuck are we going to do at Wrestlemania? If the, if the story in the feud was dumb as fuck, didn't captivate or excite anybody, and then the match is going on like I think it's going to be, if it's just one-on-one, -on -one, it's just going to be a fucking train wreck most likely if it's not perfectly, flawlessly rehearsed. So what the fuck are we going to say? Wow, but at least Becky got a good reaction at the beginning. Her entrance... The match, the feud, the story, horrible. But Becky Lynch's entrance, wow, she was over. The booking of Becky Lynch. What the fuck are we witnessing? That is what made us give a shit 
at the end of 2018. Without badass booking, you have just Becky Lynch. And this may... This may be painful to hear. This may hurt for Becky Lynch fans. But Becky Lynch is just a good wrestler. Some would say just average. She's nothing captivating. She's nothing epic. Her promos hit or miss. She could deliver some good ones, and then she could deliver some just damn awful ones. It's true. That's always been Becky Lynch's MO. We all know that. That doesn't mean you can't be fans of her. That doesn't mean she can't main event pay-per-views. If given the right booking. Some say she's over. Others say she is over. Rated. I'm not going to go to one extreme or the other. I'll say she's a good wrestler. But in the grand scheme of things, pretty freaking average. What made her stand out was that end run she had in 2018 where she started looking badass. And organically, we started comparing her to Stone Cold Steve Austin when she did get busted up and she was bleeding when she invaded Raw. That was Stone Cold-esque. And then we said, hey, if you're going to lose to Asuka, if you pass out, that's Stone Cold-esque, but that's not trying to be like Stone Cold. That's legit what should be happening. You already backed yourself into a corner. If you want Asuka to win, it's simple. You have Becky Lynch pass out. Stone Cold-esque, but not forced. Now you have Stephanie McMahon suspending her. Becky Lynch unloads on Stephanie. Then security or suits and ties come in, and Becky Lynch starts beating up suits and ties. But it didn't look awesome at all. It didn't look epic. This was a train wreck, train wreck of a brawl. Nothing was looking good. Her bows to Stephanie McMahon were laughable to the point where Stephanie McMahon was actually kicking Becky off and actually was able to walk up the ramp, not even run away. She's hip tossing suits and ties. It looks so unrealistic. And that's, that's your badass Becky Lynch. That's the, that's the booking they have for her now. And she meets Ronda face to face. Ronda punks her down. And Becky Lynch eats it and walks away again. Just like SmackDown last week where she got in her mom SUV. <laughs> the awful SUV. And she drives off pouting. This is the new Becky Lynch. She's the powder. She's the weakling. She's the meek one. She's anything but badass. But, but, she gets a reaction, BC. Her momentum is white hot. Okay. You were wrong. Eat the L. It's all right to be wrong. Eat the L. The Amplified Man was right all along. Everyone heard the reaction she got last week, and they started going, PC, you were wrong. The momentum is with her. And then you started to see the booking continuing after the Rumble, and now all of us, even Becky Lynch fans, are starting to say, hmm, this isn't the Becky Lynch we should be seeing. You think? Hmm, one person on the planet was telling you that all along, wasn't he? It was me. Other, every other podcaster and YouTuber and wrestling journalist was trying to sell you on the idea that this is the only possible main event we could have. It needs to be the women this year because they're women. And because Becky Lynch is the most over in the company. But they failed to think about booking. Crowd response is only one part of momentum. One part of where you end up. Your booking is going to dictate everything, including your character and how you are perceived. For the next two months, I have to watch the supposed man, the badass, limping around and barely able to compete against Ronda. She'll play the, the gimp, the, 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 the one hobbing along, hobbling around, Taking on the authority. This feels kind of forced. And now everybody is saying, last night with Stephanie, that reminded me of Stone Cold and Vince. Wow. That's the delusional wrestling world we now live in. 
People are clamoring so much for the next Austin, the next punk, that they're willing to eat any booking Vince gives them and they'll compare it. No, when I make comparisons with Becky and Stone Cold, it's organic. It's not forced comparisons. That is forced as fuck. And that's been Becky's booking lately. Forced and not even in the right way. And Ronda Rousey's booking, not any better. Ronda Rousey, especially now that she is getting some heat and some booze, should be having an entourage around her. She should be playing up her hype. She should be playing up who and what she is known for and why people hated her in the first place. She tried to shake hands and smile at everyone and talk about, gee gosh, what a dream this is to work in this place. I love this my whole life and I'm working here now. Being a champion means fighting every day and going for your dreams and, and reaching your goals. Fuck that. I want to see Rousey who's not shaking hands, who's talking trash, but only a little bit of trash, not dialogue and pages. And who's punching motherfuckers in the mouth and beating them in seconds. And then Becky's booking is simple. You have her be badass, take no more shit from anybody in your face, not waiting for you to get in my face. I'm coming to you before you come to me. That's Becky. You have Becky showing up at Ronda's house. You have Becky Lynch waiting in the parking lot. I would have a Ronda Rousey limousine pull up. That's right, with an entourage. Really make people hate Ronda Rousey. Have her with the strap all shined up. Everything that success is. Everything that we perceive, the common folk, perceive as success. Right? People get jealous at that. They envy that. They hate that when they see something ultra successful. So you have Ronda show up, but she gets cut off. Not by, Ma by Becky Lynch's mama's SUV, but by some badass vehicle. And she cuts it off. I don't give a fuck if it's a monster truck. She cuts that limo off and Rhonda and her entourage get out and Becky gets out. Just Becky, no entourage. And Becky Lynch starts talking shit to Rhonda. Rhonda starts talking that shit back. The entourage is breaking them up. And Becky Lynch says, I'll see you out there, champ. And they get in the ring later that night for a contract signing. And at the contract signing, they legitimately go to war. All around ringside, into the crowd, up the staging area. Backstage, we fade to black with an epic brawl. And then for the next several weeks, WWE has security detail with both so they don't have any interaction. But whenever they pass each other backstage, there's a camera there and they start almost going to war. And now you have... Ronda's security detail with Becky's security detail and they're getting in the fight, sort of. They're trying to separate them two. That will build up. So you have the initial contract signing brawl post-Royal Rumble, which would have been last night. And then for the next several weeks, you have them in the same building, but the tensions just keep getting hotter and hotter. But they cannot get to one another. There's so many bodies between them. But you know, you know, at any moment, they could collide. That not only keeps you intrigued for every single Monday Night Raw, but to WrestleMania. But instead, we'll make Becky Lynch look like she's got this injury. She can't wrestle. She can't even fight. She looks like a little weakling hobbit. And then we'll suspend her. And some people are saying this is a good thing. Because WWE most likely wouldn't have had anything for Becky anyway. So might as well keep her out. Yeah. Good, good idea. G great idea. Let's give WWE a pass. They're not going to have anything anyway for her. You might as well have her playing an injury and getting suspended. It sets up two things. It makes her really the underdog and it shows that she's really willing to fight the authority, BC. Oh, haven't seen that before. Let's do it. Let's, it's already exciting me from last night. Oh, yeah. Tragic train wreck. Those two first segments... From the suspension of Becky Lynch to Ronda Rousey's destruction of the Riot Squad. Their promos are trash. These matches are trash. This booking 
is a dumpster fire. Don't even bother leaving any comment down below that contradicts my words because I am now giving you facts. I am open to debate if I am giving you an opinion. That is no longer an opinion. That is a fact. And facts are not to be debated on this channel. They'll be gone. You'll be gone. Trust me. I have no time today for bullshit. If you can't comprehend my words... Not only should you not be on the channel, you shouldn't be a pro wrestling fan because you don't know what you're watching and you're part of the problem, not the solution. You're one of the idiots that shows up to Vince McMahon's arenas and takes everything he's giving you and then you look at him and go, please sir, can I have some more? And you're the reason he keeps doing it. Because idiots like you will show up, you'll shell out your money, and you'll say, Wow, this is great! She's getting a reaction! <laughs> Fucking awesome. Awesome WrestleMania main event we all have. Because it's gotta be the women, because we're in the women's era. We need to have women main event mania, beastie. It's all about the movement. Hey man, I'm down with women main eventing mania. I asked for one thing for months now and WWE has failed to give it to me. Give me a story and a feud I can be invested in. If this is it, no. I was excited maybe for Survivor Series. That's not a WrestleMania main event, especially six months after it was originally supposed to happen. And I told you all along, it was not going to. Some people just didn't want to listen. They wanted to wait to say, BC, you are wrong. When my third rule is always, even when you think I'm wrong, hold on, wait for it. I'm going to end up being right. It happened again. Becky Lynch fans, I want to uh, uh, appreciate you guys and give a shout out. Every video that I make and, and I speak these words and, and I know they're harsh, they can be hard to hear because it's not easy to accept, especially if you're a Becky Lynch fan and I'm saying these things, but you guys have been awesome. There's been some times where I've hit in certain superstars and their fans just get all pissy and I love that. I'm not going to lie. I love pushing buttons. I love crossing the line. I'm the bad guy. I love that shit. But with Becky Lynch, your her fans... When they hear me say these words, they actually, they agree. BC, I love Becky Lynch, but, but I agree, man. This is not how I would book her, and this is not how she would, should be being booked. BC, I'm a Becky Lynch fan. This is not what I expected. BC, I can't believe this is happening. I love Becky. Why is it? So you guys are actually at least get it a little more. It seems to me like Becky Lynch fans are a little more knowledgeable. I hope that continues. And I hope you know that I don't mind Rebecca, the woman playing Becky Lynch, and I don't even mind the character Becky Lynch in pro wrestling. I don't mind either. But if you're telling me that's my WrestleMania main event with Ronda Rousey, you can't book her as a weak underdog. This shit feels beyond forced. We like to throw around the word forced. This seems forced. It's beyond that. This is not even the character we fell in love with late 2018. This is not even a shell of that character. I don't even know who this is. But I don't want to see this story for the next two months. And that's my last match at Mania. The fuck out of here. Some people are going to try to debate this. I think it's fine, BC. Uh, it's... it's it's exciting to me, BC. I can't hold my anticipation for this, BC. Oh my god. Delusional wouldn't even start the process to de describing the imbecile that these people are. Honestly. It's just fucking, it's mind-boggling to me. And by the way, 
I'd rather a one-on-one -on -one match, Becky and Ronda, than a triple threat with Charlotte, even though that would be a better match. But I do feel we need a blow-off with this once and for all. My issue is, that match being in the legit last match main event at WrestleMania with this type of booking. I want to make that clear. If they could make me give a shit, I am fully on board with Becky Ronda in the main event. But if this is what it's going to be, which I knew it was from the beginning, and if they don't change anything, I'm not on board. That's not my main event, bottom line. It's WWE's. It's nothing that I'm going to promote. It's nothing that I'm going to be excited about. And I probably won't talk about it as such. I'll tell you what I did talk about as such for 30 minutes, and that is these two. 30 minutes talking about this motherfucking bullshit booking. I shouldn't have to do this every week. <sighs> Moving on, where do you go? The other big match for Raw for Mania is going to be Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar. Not only did we not get Brock Lesnar like we usually don't, we also didn't get Seth Rollins. Now he is nursing some nagging injuries, I understand that. But shit, three hours of Raw? Pumping up your WrestleMania matches. You've got an Elimination Chamber coming up. Seth Rollins, not even a part of the show. No Brock, no Seth. That's your championship match at WrestleMania as well. WrestleMania is looking more epic by the minute. If you didn't... If you didn't catch up on the sarcasm there, then you probably also believe in the fucking Easter Bunny. What else do we talk? I spent a half an hour on that. There was no Universal Championship storyline at all. So, where do we... Where do we the, the Revival? Winning another four-team schmoz match? A team at every corner because they don't know what they're doing. Let's throw all our D-rated teams out there. The Lucha Underground Summer House Party Project with the Piñata. You got the B-team still there. Now they're, they're, they've been so placed in obscurity that they're now the fucking Z-team. I don't even know if they're in the realm of the alphabet anymore. Who else was out there? Heavy Machinery... I feel they got the, the, the biggest presence right now. They probably should end up winning this son of a bitch. But no, it's the Revival that wins it now. Because you bitch, you cry enough. If you're a big enough news story in mainstream media, oh, they might leave. They're unhappy. WWE's got to make it look like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. We're all one big happy snuggly family in the back. See, the Revival's winning. The Revival wins, and, and this is what? It leads to another tag team championship opportunity. Half the time, I don't even know who the champions are! Gable and Rude. Okay, Gable and Rude versus The Rival. Again! 17 championship opportunities in three months for The Revival. Well, shit, if you give somebody enough opportunities, they're going to eventually succeed. At what point do we just call it luck? over skill. If you give me 10 lottery tickets and you tell me one of them has a million dollars of a win and I pick the wrong one and you say, that's okay, pick again and another wrong one and I pick another wrong one and another one and I pick five wrong ones in a row. Well, now there's only five tickets left, but you say, keep picking, BC. So I pick again and I miss it, and I pick again and I miss it, and on the eighth try, I got it! Well, can you tell me I really know how to pick them, or was it just plain old luck? Eventually, it's going to happen if you give me enough tries, enough chances. <sighs> And again, you talk about the crowd reaction, BC, for Becky. Yeah, that same crowd reaction from the Revival was there, wasn't it? After that big W. Yeah, not so much. Fucking Revival now. What the fuck is the Revival doing for me? This is, this is one of those teams 
that for the indie people out there, the indie marks out there, th this is their dream team. So much wrestling talent. That's all that's about. It should just be the wrestling. It doesn't matter if they have zero charisma. It doesn't matter if they're, uh, if they fucking can cut epic promos. It doesn't matter if they're booked properly. They can really wrestle. Okay, this is the WWE. It's never, listen to me, younger fans, listen. It has never been about just the wrestling. It is about all the glitz, the glamour, the promos, the backstage segments, the drama, the entertainment. If you don't like that, hit the bricks. There's ROH, New Japan. AEW's coming around. WWE is not going to be just a bunch of nine, five foot nine dudes bouncing around. No. You're not going to turn this shit into more of a circus than it already is. Oh, fucking remind The revival's the best thing in the world since vanilla pudding. Shut the fuck up about the revival. I look at the revival and it's just, eh, it's the revival. BC, they've had great matches in NXT. Okay, everybody did. Wow. I'm on fire today, baby. Wow, nobody is safe. Where, what else? What else, guys? What the fuck else? Bailey and Sasha Banks. I don't even, I love Sasha Banks. You guys know that. What the fuck was going on last night? Nikki Cross is with Alicia Fox. How the fuck? Three weeks ago. 21 days before last night. Okay? Three weeks from last Monday. For those of you whose math skills ain't exactly up to par. Three weeks from last Monday. From last night, I should say. Let's just say Nikki Cross was rubbing shoulders with Natalia and Bailey taking on the Riot Squad. That was her Raw debut. Here we are three weeks later... No mention or anything about a heel turn, no actions to be done, no dastardly deeds. Nikki Cross is now rubbing shoulders with Alicia Fox. I feel so bad for not just casual fans sometimes, but for young kids growing up watching WWE today. Back when I was growing up, we had one awesome thing that we could always depend on. Because kids are smarter than you give them credit for. We had consistency. This company has zero consistency because I honestly feel when they show up to work every every day, they forgot what happened the day before and that's why they truly want their fans to forget what happened the day before or the week before. Because they don't even know anymore. There's zero consistency. It's like Dana Brooke. She was rubbing shoulders. Who I think it was with Sasha and Bailey, right? But it was with faces and then the next week, she's attacking Sasha and Bailey. Dana Brooke was just... And now they're doing it with Nikki Cross. Granted, I think Nikki Cross should be a heel, but what the fuck are you doing then? Why is she debuting on Raw three weeks ago with Bailey and Natalia? Three weeks later, she's now on Team Alicia Fox. She's playing up the heel now. They attack Sasha Banks and Bailey supposedly backstage. So Sasha Banks, who is, by the way, just like Seth Rollins, nursing some nagging injuries in real life. That is true. But I would have done this ten times better than this. Sasha just looked like she was as weak as Becky Lynch out there last night. Didn't want to fight at all. I'm okay. No, do it differently. I understand. You got some injuries. You can't really compete or get too physical. So I would have done this a hundred times better than what we got last night. That was a train wreck and a half. Bailey and Sasha end up winning though because of course... They're in this Elimination Chamber match. They're eventually going to win tag team titles. Whoa! Yay! What do you mean you're not excited, Sasha fans? That means all of us that love Sasha Banks, we get to watch her stuck in a tag team for another year! But BC, she's got brand new titles. She made history, BC. Good shit. Great. Uh... Put one in the good column for history. History was made. Yeah. <sighs> what else? What else do you want to honestly? Do you honestly want to fucking talk? What else is there to talk about? 
Jeff Jarrett, Road Dog, and Elias. L listen, when you talk about entertainment, that was the only entertainment segment. No, 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 Dean Ambrose. I'll get to that in a second. But seeing Jeff Jarrett, my two minutes of nostalgia was probably one of the only fucking entertaining things I had aside from Dean Ambrose last night. And that went on entirely too long. I can't believe they did the whole My Baby Tonight song. I actually like the tune. Brings me back to my childhood. And I don't mind Road Dogg and Jeff Jarrett singing that again last night. But I expected Elias to cut him off halfway. Because it's clear the crowd, it doesn't mean as much to today's crowd as it did in my crowd back then, that song. So it is what it is, I understand. So you give a little bit for us, and then you give today's crowd and Elias walk in. Elias let him sing the whole song, basically, and then he comes in. What I don't like about this is the right thing happened at first, and then, as always, WWE fucks it up. Elias ends up beating Jeff Jarrett. And I'm like, perfect. You used Jeff Jarrett, first time wrestling on Raw in 20 years. You brought out Road Dog. You had all of the old suck it chants. If you're not down with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is the five time to whatever. All of Road Dog's little cute little lines that he used to give us. We got it all. We got the nostalgia, and we got to see Elias beat the nostalgic act. This can only bump up your credibility and bump up your character and your booking. And then right after he, he wins the match, he gets hit by a guitar with Jeff, by Jeff Jarrett, and Road Dog is telling him to suck it as Elias is down and out, knocked out unconscious. So you had the guy look really strong with a victory over a guy who many say was one of the best in the business. I'm not one of them. Don't worry, BC. What do you mean, Jeff? Jeff? I'm saying some people think he was one of the best. If not in wrestling, he meant a lot to the business. And he did, guys. That is true. His family and he. There would be no TNA right now. That's probably a good thing for many people, I understand. Because <laughs> then we didn't have Josh Matthews. But there wouldn't even be. Uh, TNA and all that employment for all of those wrestlers in, in suits and ties down there. They would be out of jobs, maybe, if it wasn't for people like Jeff Jarrett. So, whether you loved his wrestling or not, he meant a lot to the business. Elias pins him, middle of the ring. That's huge. And then, seconds later, Elias is getting knocked out unconscious by a guitar shot. He's being humiliated with a suck it chant. What did that do for Elias? The victory now is meaningless! You listen to Elias cut that promo when he interrupted Jeff Jarrett and Road Dogg last night. This guy has the makings to be a superstar. Legit, bona fide superstar. And if done correctly, he had the chance to be one of those larger than life guys I'm talking about. Or gals, in this case, guy. He could have been larger than life. He's got that presence and that aura, that look. He can wrestle. He can cut the promos. You gave him the time. And then you found ways, any way you could, to fuck him up. Just like Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman, you gave everything to. You booked him up to be this monster. And then every chance you got... You wiped out the rug, you swiped it out from underneath him, and you took all of his credibility away. And now Braun Strowman is the opposite of a monster. He's a downright loser. A whiny, wimpy bitch. That's it. That's Braun Strowman. Kurt Angle's in the middle of the ring looking like he's going to give a retirement speech. Baron Corbin and Drew McIntyre come down to talk some trash. Braun ends up saving the day. And now our main event on Raw is Braun and Kurt Angle versus Drew and Baron Corbin. Who the fuck wants to see that in my main event of Raw? This is basically the same feud out of all of 2018 that we've already seen. Braun versus Drew McIntyre and Baron Corbin. Or Baron Corbin and Kurt Angle. It's the same feud we saw all of 2018. That's it! That was your main event of Monday Night Raw. It does nothing for Elimination Chamber. It does nothing for WrestleMania. And it does nothing to leave us excited for last night or today or next week. Nothing. 
There was no point to it. They want you to hold on for three hours for that main event. Strowman and Kurt Angle beat Drew McIntyre and Baron Corbin, or at least beat the shit out of them, right? Choke slams onto steps, and Drew McIntyre, who many thought, he's the next big thing, BC, you watch. And I said, you know what? He's got the look. He's got the presence. He can cut a good promo. He can wrestle. Maybe. And then I thought, wait, <laughs> it's WWE. They're going to ruin him so much that even when they try to push him, just like they're doing to Becky Lynch, even when they try to push him the main events, he lost all credibility. Because fans with a brain in their skull are going to remember all of this. Just like I'm going to remember Becky Lynch tapping out in six seconds to Asuka when she's in that WrestleMania against Ronda. And probably gonna beat Ronda. Okay. Wink. <sighs> Dean Ambrose. At least in three hours of tragic bullshit last night, Dean Ambrose at least got an LOL out of me. Because I legit LOL'd. You have a moment of bliss. You got EC3 out there. EC3 is not even saying anything. That's probably the best for all of us. If only Josh Matthews down in TNA could take that hint. Uh, Ali, uh, uh, who is it? Uh, Alexa Bliss was looking dynamite last night. I just want to say that. And yes, I no longer, no longer do I feel like I'm, uh, like I'm belittling women by saying they looked hot anymore. Because when you watch the Super Bowl, everybody's talking about Maroon 5's lead singer taking his shirt off. And all the girls are giving the drooling icons, the emojis, and the hearts, and talking about how hot he is. They can do it, but when a guy says an entertainer is beautiful, or hot, or looks sexy, or, or gives the drooling for anything... <laughs> we are uh, chauvinistic, we're, 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 uh, we're belittling... We're, what's the word? I don't even fucking know. We're just evil human beings. We're an evil race of people. Gender of people. Race of people. <laughs> the human race that is mankind. Mankind is just evil. The entire gender, according to Gillette's advertisement. You ever see that one? That's a good one. Makes you ashamed to be a man. That's the generation we live in. But women can just say, I see it all the time with Roman Reigns and Finn Balor. With our uh, women wrestling fans? Oh, you should see the comments I read, man. Trust me, when you've been doing this a couple years and you reach an audience like I have in the thousands, I see some shit. Girls love this and they're not afraid to express that. But when a man says a woman is hot, oh boy, it's not about being hot. It's about her wrestling. Anyway, I just want to go off on a side rant. I'm no longer after seeing the floods, the thousands of comments I saw about the Super Bowl halftime show. And the guy taking his shirt off and the girls drooling all over the place and not holding back their words. Telling you exactly how they felt about it and loving it. I no longer am going to hold my fucking tongue when I think somebody is dynamite. Alexa Bliss last night in those pants and that top sizzling oh, to the touch, baby. EC3 is out there and maybe the ladies like the EC3. So hey, best of both. Hey, we got everything. The dude's got Alexa. The gal's got EC3. Why not put them on there for 10 minutes? Fuck it. It's probably more entertaining than all of Raw, and it ended up being such. Not at first, because Nia Jax comes out. She starts talking about, I don't know what I'm going to do next. First, I was in the Men's Royal Rumble. I created all the headlines. Now, maybe I'll take Becky Lynch's spot at WrestleMania. Crowd obviously gives a little bit of a boo. Dean Ambrose comes out. Remember last week, Dean Ambrose was bullied out of the ring by Nia Jax. Dean Ambrose starts talking trash to Nia Jax. Talking about how she has an obsession with him. Chill out, please. Basically, my wife's right behind me. Can you please give some distance? And then he goes on to EC3. Who, who are you? I love that. Who are you? EC3 goes to say something. Dean Ambrose pulls it back. I love it. And Dean Ambrose just starts rapid fire questioning. And it's hilarious. One of the questions, legit LOL out of the Amplified Man. And he goes, where's EC1 and EC2? <laughs> <laughs> or what happened to EC1 and EC2? I love that, man. You never think of that shit. EC3, we never thought about the one and the two. Dean Ambrose, 
Matter of fact question. Where's one and two? I, I want to meet the whole clan. The whole EC family. I love that, man. Uh, Dean Ambrose was on fire last night. It, it looked like a guy who has a, a renowned sense of direction. I love that. And I think if a, if a new contract wasn't already signed, there is a rumblings and talks. He's not going anywhere. I really don't think so. This is all going to end up being a big work. And then that led to an EC3 versus Dean Ambrose match in which Dean Ambrose lost clean to EC3. Now, if EC3 lost that match, that is detrimentally travesty, a travesty to his career. So he had to win. That's detrimental to him, and it's a travesty. However, the, the way he beat Dean Ambrose, this adds on to Ambrose losing last week to Rollins, about to voice his frustrations to the crowd before Nia Jax came out to bully him out of the ring, and then this week he loses to EC3. You people are following right into what Vince McMahon wants you to do. Everyone now is like, wow, they're just going to make him eat losses all the way until his contract is up. Do you honestly think Dean would allow that? Do you think Dean is just going to go out there for two more months and be a bozo? Even if he's leaving? No. This is leading to something. This is going to be a transformation for Dean Ambrose. And I think when it's all said and done, it's going to lead to bigger and better. And we're going to get old school Dean Ambrose back. He's going to find himself. And I honestly believe not only is this a work... He is not leaving WWE. Every time I say that, I get, I get people that... Uh, my, my decision is not going to change. I get the same people going, No, I think it's real, basically. And I'm like, yes, you already told me what you feel. This is my channel. I'm talking about a lot of things. Dean Ambrose is one of them. I'm going to keep reiterating. I don't need you to keep reiterating to me. What the fuck do I need your reiteration for? BC, hi, it's Hank Jr. Uh, from Alabama. I still think this is real, BC. Thanks, Hank! So I like that whole thing, man. And Dean Ambrose losing like that, it never sits well at first. But again, if you look at a big picture, and I definitely know there's a bigger picture. There's no way this guy is losing for the next two months through WrestleMania. If that's the case, I'll eat my words, and I'll explode on this decision, or these decisions. Trust me. Wait for it. Something bigger is happening here with Dean Ambrose. Um, fucking A, man. I, I don't even know what else. Uh, let's just think of superstars. I guess. Bobby Lashley was out there. Oh, who was it? Leo Rush versus Finn Balor. Uh -oh. Who on this planet would honestly give a fuck? I don't even care who won. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I, I don't even know if I was fucking... Coherent at the time. Uh, what else? Can't believe I'm even remembering most of the show. I honestly can't even believe it because it was that forgettable and so much of a train wreck. That's it. Anything else, guys? That you know what? It wasn't worth mentioning. That's the bottom line. So I'm sure there was other things. I, I just at this point, I got out what I wanted to get out. You guys take it for what it is. That's your review this week. I, it's so frustrating to watch a post. Royal Rumble, second one, I know, last Monday was the post, but here we are after the Rumble. We're setting up, we're supposed to be for WrestleMania, and it doesn't even feel like WrestleMania season. The Super Bowl is over, Royal Rumble is over, right now it usually feels like WrestleMania season. We already have at least one announcement for the Hall of Fame. There's excitement for our main event. None of that! Fucking A, man. It's just it's fucking... Anyway. SmackDown tonight. I don't know what the fuck they're actually going to pull. They, they, they've already got... Uh, what? Matches planned? Or do, do that? I don't even... They probably got their whole fucking show planned. And it's probably mediocre garbage. Just because SmackDown is usually better than Raw... I'm in a mood today where I'm not throwing them any fucking mulligans. You either come out swinging for the fences... Or you don't come out at all! Sorry, not sorry, SmackDown. Raw put me in a mood where now your backs are against the corner. I'll put a review out just like this one tomorrow. If you ain't able to captivate us at all for mania. That's it. You know the rules. Drink your coffee, whoop ass, man. There's no other option in life. Those are the fucking rules. Those are the Amplified rules. Until next time, stay Amplified. Holla at your boy. Peace, cuz he's out. For now, the Amplified man saying, check you.